It is 8 p.m. and here are the top stories we're following. Allegations of sexual harassment and failure to act at Cherry Creek schools. Tonight, outraged parents taking their concerns straight to the Cherry Creek School Board. We're live tonight with a reaction from both families and school officials. A major break in a triple murder investigation. A suspect now under arrest for the killing of a four-year-old child. We're working to ensure that race no longer predicts housing outcomes. Promoting home ownership in communities of color. This is a step to correcting those wrongs. A new program helping Denver families afford a down payment worth tens of thousands of dollars. There's no interest and you don't have to pay it back. The Metro's two largest cities talking urban camping, the changes being proposed to help the homeless. And one small town gets a big win. Thousands of new homes coming to Johnstown. It's great now, but it'll make it a better place to live and to work and to play. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jacqueline Allen. I'm Danny New. For weeks, Denver 7 has reported on the allegations against the Cherry Creek School District. Several parents claiming that their children were either sexually harassed or assaulted and that the district just failed to protect their children from the alleged suspects. In April, students staged a walkout in protest of the district's treatment of one of the sexual assault victims. Well, tonight, community members are voicing their concerns to the Cherry Creek School Board. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us outside the meeting underway right now. Colette? Just under 20 people are signed up to speak tonight, Jacqueline, at that Board of Education meeting happening right now behind me here at Grandview High School. But parents I talked with say they believe there would have been more people addressing the board tonight, but technical difficulties stopped them from signing up. I did speak with one student in the district who's a junior at Cherokee Trail High School, along with a parent who has two kids in the district. They told me why they're at this meeting tonight. The student says she's been a victim of an assault at her high school in the district. When that happened, she says a no contact agreement was the response of the school. Basically, that bars any communication between the students involved in the incident, among other things. Now, those with the district say it's just one tool they use when investigating such claims. But the student believes more action should have been taken. That's why she's here tonight, telling us how this conversation has made her feel. Alone, I'd say maybe felt like it was like normal, even though it's not normal or shouldn't be normal. The students feel like they're not being provided with a safe learning environment and it causes them a lot of stress and anxiety and depression. And so we're hopeful that there's a better way um, to address these issues and to help these students and to have accountability and discipline. The district did send us a statement saying that they would never violate a student's privacy or potentially re-traumatize a victim by alerting an entire school community when allegations like this do come up. They say they investigate them very thoroughly. I'm going to go back inside and listen in on this meeting happening right now. That public comment just getting underway. Live tonight, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you very much, Colette. And an arrest has been made for the triple murder in East Denver from two weeks ago. Denver police announced the arrest of Elijah Hood today, who is being held for investigation of three counts of first degree murder. Police say they received multiple tips connecting him to the shooting on North Dunkirk Street, which resulted in the killing of Denise Hood, her grandson, Donnie Allen Jr., and his child, Makai Parham Allen. Police believe that Denise Hood is the aunt of Elijah. And crews are still searching the Cherry Creek Reservoir for the body of a 29-year-old man who went missing over the weekend. Colorado Parks and Wildlife say the man was not wearing a life jacket. This was on Saturday when he fell off an inner tube being pulled by a boat. And as that search continues, the Cherry Creek Reservoir will stay closed to boating. Also new tonight, Vicki White, the former Alabama corrections officer who helped an inmate escape, is now dead after shooting herself. She and Casey White were found in Indiana after leading police on a car chase after a 10 day manhunt. White was awaiting trial for murder. And he is now in custody. Police say Vicki helped Casey escape on her last day before her retirement. A brief fire this afternoon set off alarms at the Suncor refinery in Commerce City. South Adams County Fire was able to knock down the flames in just about 15 minutes. Suncor says this fire happened at its plant one gasoline making unit and no one was hurt. Redlining is part of Denver's history and it's certainly not a good part. From the late 1930s to the start of the 2000s, communities of color were often refused home loans in certain areas because of their race. 
and now the city is hoping to right that wrong by offering tens of thousands of dollars in down payments to help generations of Coloradans affected by that practice. Denver 7's Micah Smith is going deeper into today's announcement. She spoke with one program participant who says he is still feeling the impact of his family's redlining experience in 2022. Uh, this is a picture of my grandpa at his church, Macedonia Church, with Martin Luther King in 1964. Dontrell Stark says his grandfather fought to end all racial discrimination in Denver, including in housing. But 60 years after this picture was taken. To this day, that we're still struggling with the same thing that my um, grandparents struggle with. Starks is finding it hard to buy a home. I have been trying to buy a house for probably about 10 years, and but it never seems to work. Oh, your down payment money hasn't been sitting in the bank long enough. Or, you know, you haven't been working at this job long enough. For far too long, communities of color have been excluded from the American dream. During a news conference, Denver Mayor Michael Hancock and Chief Housing Officer Britta Fisher announced the launch of a new program, helping future homeowners of color like Starks. $15,000 to $25,000 to help with down payment or closing costs. There's no interest and you don't have to pay it back. You do have to be someone impacted by redlining between the years of 1938 to 2000. Redlining is the practice of refusing to give someone a home loan in certain areas of a city because of their race. In Denver, redlining forced people of color to live inside the lines on this city map, limiting home ownership opportunities for black and Latino residents. About 50% of us Denverites own our homes. And it's 54%, it's 54% among white households and much lower for BIPOC households at just 41 percent. This is history repeating itself. Starks is one of the first to participate in the program. You would think that it would be getting easier over all this time. Uh, you would think that we wouldn't even need uh, a Metro DPA program to help white people get into these homes, but we do. After 10 years of banks turning him down, Stark says his family of seven can finally move out of their three bedroom house and into a home that fits his family. Micah Smith, Denver 7. And this assistance is an interest-free, three-year forgivable loan. You can apply on the city's website, and city leaders hope to increase home ownership among people of color from 41%, as you just heard, to 45% by 2026. And going deeper, Denver City Council is currently meeting to discuss several resolutions related to housing. Earlier, members briefly had to leave the chamber when protesters demanding an end to the city's camping ban refused to let public comment end. However, the ban on urban camping in Denver was not actually on tonight's agenda. As for resolutions being discussed, one helps the city identify people who are in, in and out of prison and often homeless and try to get them into safe, long-term housing. Another bill changes the city's zoning code so that they can expand the housing affordability project. That alteration require a portion of new large developments to have affordable units. Aurora City Council is currently meeting to revise parts of the city's urban camping ban. The City Council approved a contract to the company that will help with camp cleanups. They also approved a resolution requiring the city to store the personal items of those who are moved from encampments. Since this ban went into effect at the end of the month, Aurora tells us notices have been issued to remove six encampments. The town of Johnstown, just south of Fort Collins, is preparing for some growth. The developer plans to build 1,500 new single-family homes which could give the small town off I-25 a pretty big boost in population. The mayor of Johnstown insists potential commercial businesses coming in would not only be a benefit to future residents, but also current ones. Mayor Lebsack says that one of his focuses is making sure the expansion is done right and accompanied by proper streets, infrastructure, and an emphasis on keeping local business alive. Although some locals have been hesitant to grow that rapidly, the owner of Cassidy Sports Grill downtown says that this could be a good change. Business, yeah, has definitely picked up and I don't see it changing. I'm sure that it's going to bring more businesses, uh, competition if you will, but um, I never see uh, new places opening up as competition. Altogether, more than 3,000 homes are set to be built in Johnstown by the middle of next year. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, Colorado's food banks are struggling to meet demand. Our food costs have tripled 
since pre-COVID. But your help could prevent them from running out of food. We are really depending on our community members to donate funds more than ever. It was a bit cooler today, but I have a 90 coming up later on this week. It's probably every child's dream come true. This is the body. It's just like a, a brewing barrel. We show you one Brighton Dad's DIY project that has some G-force. I guess I to have it go fast.